Yep, title says it all. Full stop. Before we get into this, I'm just going to let you know that there is a Discord where you can join and ask me whatever you want. You can talk to me, you can accuse me of things, you can get your feelings out. Cool. Now, let's get into it because, uh, who am I kidding? I've got nothing else to do today. Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea is a rushed, poorly written, bad to play mess that takes all the canon and everything established in all the other Bioshock games and turns it into such a mess that even the Godzilla continuity makes more sense in this game. And I have a hunch that that is part of the reason why we haven't seen anything from Bioshock since it came out, aside from a few very poorly done reboots or remasters, whatever you want to call these. Let's start with Burial at Sea Part 1, which came out first and was supposed to whet our appetites for the epic climax that was Burial at Sea Part 2. Burial at Sea initially comes off as some sort of weird fan fiction and the wannabe film noir beginning honestly feels closer to a porno than it does film noir. Aside from a couple segments that were kind of nice, this entire DLC is largely unmemorable, and if you play quickly, you can complete this in under an hour. I'll see the point that yeah, it was nice to see Rapture in its prime, sort of, glaring continuity errors aside, but other than that, this basically plays as another level from Infinite. It's almost insulting how once you finally get through the walking simulator portion of Sander Cohen's funhouse and you get thrown into the department store that exists because Ken Levine said so, it's, oh, you have multiple objectives that you need to go about and do. Okay, let me pull up my map and try to uh, get a lay of this land. No, never mind. just keep on mashing N and we're gonna tell you exactly where to go. It was also nice that now we can carry more than one health kit on our person and we have a full selection of weapons, but those were also things that should have been in the base game and it almost feels like a half-hearted apology. But that doesn't take away from the fact that they overtly say this is like the original Bioshock games, but then you turn around and you find out, oh yeah, it's just the same linear shoot your way to a hallway, head back to the main area after you do the thing, advance to the next area. Then we get a very fan service y Big Daddy fight, and that's it. Apparently, we're pseudo Comstock in. On to the next part. I think I forget how long we had to wait for Burial at Sea Part 2, but the wait was definitely not worth it. And, uh, side note. Bioshock has done laser weapons before that were awesome. There is no excuse for how lame the radio range feels. And if anything, if this was what you had up to this point, you shouldn't have left it in the game. So now we're at Burial at Sea Part 2, the lauded, oh, you finally get to play as Elizabeth. Oh, this is the experience we've been wanting to give you. Over 25% of this game is either walking simulator gameplay or cutscene. I am not kidding. Not counting sitting through the credits, it took me approximately three hours to get through all of Burial at Sea Part 2. And out of those three hours, 48 minutes and four seconds are some sort of interactive cinematic, like you're just walking through like the little Paris thing, full on cinematic, or parts where you're not doing anything and you're made to just sit there and observe story. It comes out to like 26% of the game is just all of that. That is a joke. Like, you could have told this in so many better ways. You can play Half-Life 2's Lost Coast free little tech demo thing and have a lot better of a time than you would watching all the cinematics and walking simulator portions of Burial at Sea Part 2 twice in the span of all that stuff. And with the way that Burial at Sea Part 2 starts, you feel like your time was further wasted because Burial at Sea Part 1 feels like a one hour intro cinematic, just enough to make you familiar with what's going on in Burial at Sea Part 2, but everything that just happened was pretty much pointless. Burial at Sea Part 2's gameplay and the way you go through the various levels in this shopping center feels very simplified and hand-holdy. 
like every time there's a major objective or something you need to know, they literally draw it all out for you. They make it impossible for you to not know exactly what you need to do. And as for the stealth mechanics, these are some of the most streamlined stealth mechanics I've ever seen and I wouldn't be surprised if these were just table scraps from the original Bioshock Infinite that they had to cut out from the finalized game. Cause stealth can be summarized as you've got your crouching with occasional the floor is very loud lava. You've got your one hit knockout from behind, a sleep dart, a distraction dart, the knockout gas that is inconsistent at best and occasionally you can magically whisk yourself away using uh, freight hooks that were willed into Rapture. There is no reason for any of this to be here. I do not buy for one second that kids were zipping around on pneumo tubes that go straight into the ocean. How, how do you explain that? There is the peeping Tom plasmid that gets introduced early on in Burial at Sea Part 2, but I would not consider that a stealth mechanic. I would consider that a hold down right click to cheat mechanic. Nothing about that is stealth. You know, it's funny, it's almost like uh, this is a very stripped down version of this other game that came out about 15 years before Burial at Sea did. A game that's known for being the quintessential stealth game that has all these elements that were in Bioshock Infinite except they were a lot better done and there were a lot more things to play around with and more ways to nuance your stealth. You know, just a game that Ken Levine himself worked on 15 years ago that he was credited at one of the, uh, as one of the leads for. I can't even say this right, it's just so... Oh my god, did you like go into the basement, find a box labeled beef, and then just take out a few things from it and bring it up and say, yep, that's our stealth system. If we directly compare, say, Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea to a contemporary stealth game that came out in the same year, oddly enough, the Thief reboot that was met to mediocre reviews, Burial at Sea Part 2 has about as much uh, stealth gameplay as maybe one or two levels from the Thief reboot. And it's kind of ironic to say that even with this mediocre at best stealth title, Eidos Montreal was better at making a stealth game than one of the original creators of the Thief franchise. Burial at Sea Part 2's biggest problem with its stealth system isn't that it's obviously borrowed from previous titles, but in how just simply unsatisfying it is. Almost every time you walk into a new room that you need to sneak around, you will always see the alternate pathways just perfectly framed. There's no like looking around, there's no say moving some boxes to reveal a vent. Everything is always just so perfectly framed that it's almost impossible to miss the pathways that they intend you to take to avoid everyone. And that makes it extremely unsatisfying. This calls back to how, just like with the objectives, they literally highlight it out in a totally different art style so that the player absolutely, positively can not miss the way that it was intended to be done. There's no wiggle room and there's no sense of satisfaction for slowly clearing a room or ghosting your way around because you are pretty much led there. The enemies are always extremely slow to notice you and almost embarrassingly oblivious at the hardest difficulties. And final insult to injury, on my most recent playthrough, I found out that it's more efficient and you won't like be completely found or killed to just barrel through rooms, just charge, sprinting the whole time through areas in Burial at Sea Part 2 and then just crouch down behind a desk or something for 10 seconds and you will be able to go much faster and much more efficiently than if you actually tried to stealth your way through. And eventually the enemies will be like, huh, was there someone here a moment ago? And you move on. None of this will matter though, because there are certain parts of the game where you're forced out of stealth and you have to fight enemies. Particularly the segment where you come uh, face to projection screen with Andrew Ryan. Now I get the feeling that a lot of you have already typed in the comments section, but it was about the story it told. Well, it's a shame that story sucked and likely had an ulterior motive that we'll get to at the end of this video. It's often said in various forms of media that when storytelling, you need to show, don't tell. And I have a feeling I'm not the first person to say the phrase in video games, you don't show, 
or tell, but you let the player explore and discover on their own. Look at all the amazing games where you can find out all these little stories just by exploring and seeing what was happening in the world without ever being shown. Burial at Sea does a whole lot of telling. So many of Elizabeth's dialogue lines are heavy-handed about Ken Levine's motifs and messages that you almost want her to just turn around and break the fourth wall already. This world values children, not childhood. Well, yeah, no surprise there. This line and its constant repetition are a perfect microcosm of how Barrel at Sea constantly tries to sound super deep but comes off as tone deaf to the very world that it created and further reinforces in this very DLC. And before you get to the end, which is a bunch of noise, just like the end of the main game was, Burial at Sea heavily relies on callbacks to previously established characters in the first Bioshock to carry you through the plot. And while some of them are acting in ways that you'd entirely expect them to, for instance, Sander Cohen, as usual, is completely crazy bordering on psychotic, but other times it just feels like the character is existing and acting in a way that's convenient for Elizabeth or the story that they want to tell. For instance, why does Ryan only want to do things a certain way? Ryan has previously been known to try and bargain with people or at the very least show he's open to negotiation. Or for instance, why did we have to go with Sander Cohen? Couldn't we have say, found somebody else in the Bioshock universe that has a vested interest in rescuing a little sister and who has a lot of influential people doing things for her benefit? Or what about the remains of Fontaine's smugglers like Peach Wilkins? There were so many avenues and so many ways that Barry at Sea could have backed up the whole there are multiple ways to achieve your goals just like in the first Bioshock that it just doesn't make sense and it feels like the story is super narrow. Burial at Sea spends so much time trying to get you close to the big names of Rapture from the first game that it goes back to that Disneyland ride feel that the main game had. The biggest problem with Burial at Sea though, especially between story, gameplay, and everything else, is that a lot of times this is overtly Ken Levine retconning everything he did not have a personal hand in in the Bioshock universe and then a bunch of things he did have a hand in just for the sake of telling a short one-off poorly handled story. Pretty much all of Bioshock 2 is either ignored or overtly retconned for instance instead of say Popper's Drop, uh, Apollo Square, which is Bioshock 1, or Persephone, where you might put political prisoners. Instead, we have this sunken department store, which also goes into how they retcon the book that Ken Levine is technically credited in helping write, where instead of going to the bottom of the ocean and using domes made out of Rhianium, no, we just built these buildings above surface and sunk them down. Uh, never mind that no one's going to be suspicious about buildings being built on the surface, brought out to sea, and sunk. There's a lot of bouncer big daddies where Alpha Series should have been, and I personally would have rather seen Alpha Series, as that would have been better to help establish exactly what time in Rapture's downfall this takes place in. And there's none of the little things that help fill the world out. No posters for, say, the Limbo Room. There's, I don't think, any reference to uh, the Patrick and Moira musical, which you'd at least think you'd see a few of in Sander Cohen's whatever the heck that place was. And you get the feeling that more writing was done with an eraser than the graphite tip of the pencil, so to speak. Now, I know that Bioshock 2 was the weakest of the franchise story-wise, and the Bioshock book isn't exactly uh, top canon, but still, it kinda hurts to see so much good storytelling laid aside. The only game that doesn't get massive retcons is the first Bioshock. But there's still a lot of plotline liberties taken in order to make the story at Burial of Sea work. And worst of all, this game retcons itself. I'm not kidding. There's, <laughs> case in point, if the whole thing about how, oh, we can't get the big daddies to bind to the little sisters. Oh no, Elizabeth, help us. Wait, then why did that big daddy murder us? during the first part of Barrel at Sea. <sighs> and also get that cheap callback to the Lutz family plotline out of here. 
That was borderline insulting. I don't know why that needed to be included. As a callback, that felt just cheap. Overall, it feels like Burial at Sea goes around shoehorned in a part of Rapture that was already pretty tight with Bioshock 2 being there, ripping everything out and burning up all the canon to provide light for the story that it wants to tell. And Elizabeth goes from a character that, while well, yes, was literally a demigod by the time Infinite ended, to dangerously flirting with Mary Sudum as she gets to meet all the characters from the original Bioshock. And then at the end when you're supposed to feel good about yourself because apparently you made Jack from the first Bioshock happen. So much for all common sense of the world dictating that Fontaine would be the first person to know and likely the person to choose Jack's trigger phrase. But no, uh, Elizabeth needs to have a vital role in making you feel something in that final, let me check my notes here, how long that stinking thing was. Ending sequence, 23 minutes, nine seconds, counting start of roll credits, like the start of the credits. It almost feels like Ken Levine wanted this to be more like an expand alone or even its own game. But 2K took a look at the pitch and was like, this is gonna be a DLC or it's gonna be nothing at all. And then in the face of the news that Bioshock was going to become a regularly happening series after his departure, maybe he thought it best that if he couldn't play with his toys, that he would break them so that nobody else would play with them in a way that he didn't see as correct. Think about it. Even huge games like the Fallout series take five or six years at most, and it's been a good five years since the last uh, Bioshock installment that was new, and there's still nothing to show for it. We've had the uh, buggy at best remasters, but hardly a scrap of new content, if at all. In fact, it kind of feels reminiscent to how they treated the Dead Space franchise, where it'd be completely radio silence until some journalist asked them at a press content or conference, hey, what about Bioshock? And then they say, no, 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 we're totally working on something. We are definitely not abandoning our intellectual property. And then more silence. Ken Levine effectively threw a pretty big wrench into the Bioshock series. And here we are with Burial at Sea. I would have actually liked to see a full-length version of Burial at Sea because a lot of this feels compressed or like they had so little time that a lot of stuff got cut and a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. But alas, that'll never be. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. And uh, thank- uh, this is the last Bioshock Infinite related video. I I'm glad to be uh, done with this. We've covered everything that we could cover and I have a lot of plans in the future for other games. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Silly boy. Silly boy. What about mommy shoes? Tickle, tickle. Meow, 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 meow.
Oh, where are you going? <clears throat> oh, you hear that? I think mommy won her Isaac run. Okay, fine, we'll pay more attention to you. Wait, no, she's going to the chest. <laughs>